In 2018, John Krasinski tells a story about a family struggling to survive in a post-apocalyptic world where sound-sensitive monsters roam the earth, devouring humans who make too much noise. Now, his universe expands as the story changes locales to New York City and catches us up from the beginning. It's A Quiet Place, Day One. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing A Quiet Place Day One. A Quiet Place Day One, written and directed by Michael Sonarski. Written and directed by Michael Sonarski. Starring Lupita Nyong'o, Joseph Quinn, Alex Wolfe, and Jaiman Hudsu. And for a complete cast listing, as usual, you can go to the link in our show notes. I am not here alone. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm here with my movie buddy, my pal, my friend. Actually, I said movie buddy. You're my, you're my <laughs> actual real life friend. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm here with J.C. Howard, baby. J.C. Howard, welcome back to Leaving the Theater. It's good to be back. Good to be back for especially this one. Especially for this one, yeah. A Quiet Place. There are three of them. Uh, most of their claim to fame came one in the fact that they had to play the quiet game for an entire film but also uh the first one was written and directed by john krasinski the second one was also written and directed by john krasinski so these were two of his kind of big pushes into becoming more uh into the category of hollywood elite if you will uh this one he he has a story by credit Mm -hmm. meaning i'm sure he helped with the treatment for this but he did not write or direct it he passed off the reins to another creator if you've seen the events of quiet place one and two you already know that we are dealing with aliens slash monsters or something like that that basically are sound sensitive meaning if they hear you they come and kill you uh the first two movies are set deep into when this happens and this film starts when this first takes place on it's, day one if day you will one, if you will yes that's right yeah. day one so uh this one follows lupita nuongo who is a terminally ill cancer patient who is basically on a fool's errand as i would say uh and that is we follow her throughout the course of the movie as we get our first air quote first look at these monsters slash aliens jc howard what did you think of this movie this was a movie i settled into my seat only to like be grasping at the armrests um i was on the edge of my seat it was a thriller it is thriller horror and the thing about it is it tries to lull you in with a lot of like humor at the very beginning. It's soft, it's funny, it's snide in some ways, and then it hits you. The thing about this movie is it has a prologue, which I really enjoyed. I don't remember, it's been a long time since I've seen the first one and I never saw the second one, but that I, I don't remember the last time I saw a movie with a full-on prologue that has like full story in that time the first one does the first one does okay cool it's been like i said it's been years the the first one as i recall was very much about protecting family and you know those kinds of things this one was very much about the persistence i feel like of the will to live so as you said lupita plays this like terminally ill cancer patient she says from the very beginning she she's dead already basically and yet there's this persistence i was thinking about when she said that line i was thinking like how are they going to make it so she wants to live like if she's a person who is marked for death already from the beginning what is what is going to keep her going and i won't say what it is but they give her a reason to want to live and i think that that is it's supposed to be at the core of any good horror movie is that your characters want to make it to see the next day and they give her a very good reason i love this movie 
I didn't like it. I, uh, <laughs> That's right. it, it's the thing. It's not, it's not a bad movie, but I think someone who is deep to, steeped in the lore of A Quiet Place, I feel like uh, now you're telling me we're getting to a third one and they ratcheted it down yeah. to a very, like, very singular story. Like, I think you get Lupita Nyong'o, so of course you're going to get great acting, but I don't think this movie had fantastic character development because there's two characters. Uh, one of the, well, and there's more than two characters, yeah. but there's, but let's say there's probably about five characters. One of them is 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 basically a cameo from A Quiet Place Chapter Two, right. uh, then Jaiman Hutsu, which isn't really a spoiler if you've seen right. uh, a, a Quiet Place Chapter Two. The other one is uh, Joseph Quinn, I believe, and he is uh, playing a character named Eric, who I do not care about. I do not. I. I he is only there essentially to uh, help Lupita Nyong'o uh, accomplish her fool's errand, which I said earlier, which I understand. But I, you know what? And, and this isn't to trump any of your assessment of the movie, because I think a lot of the stuff that you were saying is true. My issue with it is that I, I, I think... We've done very big, grandiose themes in the first two movies about family and mm-hmm, protection mm-hmm, and what does right. it mean to like all that because right. the persistence of life is very a very strong uh, theme in the second movie. Yeah. But I feel like now we get to this one, and it's almost like they restarted thematically again, not mm-hmm. just from the beginning, but yeah. thematically. Mm-hmm. And I thought if you're going to do a prequel like this, there was going to be a little bit more world building. Uh-huh. And because there wasn't, we were set in one place the whole time yeah. in what was supposed to be New York City which looked and felt like yeah. New York City for all intents and yeah. purposes. Apparently, it was, it was England. Yeah. <laughs> England like, and, and Vancouver. Yeah, England and Vancouver, which, yeah. way to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but that being said, like, they, uh, like, sitting here watching it, I just think if you're going to thematically restart from the beginning, it seems like I'm, I'm wondering if, are, are we going into a different story? Are there different branches of this? Because the whole purpose of them saying they were going to build out this universe was I thought we were going to hear more about maybe even the fight against these aliens, like what's going to look like moving forward, all of that. And we didn't get much of that. We got this very, like, very tightly contained story, which was good, but it got to the end and I'm like, come on, man, I already did this. Why are you making me do this again? Nope, not for me. I was <laughs> into it. Ratchet it all the way down. It was it was a quiet place, right? It was, it was quiet, it was contained, and that's what, to be sure, that's what I went in expecting. I expected it, it, I went in expecting it to be quiet and contained because it's called a quiet place. And I appreciated the fact that they ratcheted it down and gave me, a, in some ways, a smaller world even than the first one, uh, which again is the only one that I saw. And the reason I, I appreciated that is because I am always for like, tell me how this whole thing started. It's why I watched The Walking Dead. It's why I watch anything post-apocalyptic. And by the way, so that's it. Okay. Now let me jump in real quick. Please jump in. It's jump actually, in. I, I, you probably should have seen the second one uh-huh. because the second one starts with the prologue of day one. Huh? What? Yeah, the second one starts okay. with the prologue of day one of this family from day from the first one uh-huh. of that family in their mm-hmm. own hometown when where this thing is happening. Okay. And so when you said take you back from where it all started, yeah. I feel like that's probably where our disconnect is because on the yeah. second one they expand the world yet still keeping it like a focus on yeah. this family, and then in this one they basically took me to a different place with the same monsters right. and then told me another tightly contained story. So I yeah. think you got to see two. Yeah, well, no, it sounds like I shouldn't see two is the situation. Because, like, I enjoyed three because I, ha- I, I guess, because I haven't seen two and I didn't see the repetition of it because I could totally see that. If, if they essentially did the same thing and said, like, let's just get someone else that people like, L- Lupita Nyong'o and, and Joseph Quinn, like, people like them, let's just put them in the same story, then there's, there's really nothing to see. So... I guess my recommendation is if you haven't seen the second one, this is the movie for you because like you'll love it. And if you've seen the second one, maybe not so much. Um, I think the thing that I, I will, I have a lot of willingness to suspend disbelief. And when you're talking about a post-apocalyptic film, you have to suspend disbelief. You have monsters or aliens kind of running around, you know, running around the streets of New York. And I am willing to suspend disbelief for that. That's perfectly fine. But the idea of keeping a cat quiet. There is a cat in this movie and I was just taken out every single time that the cat doesn't just meow and like run away and like cause a a, a huge ruckus. Um, That was something that I will say as a cat owner pulled me out of it. I will say that there, there is animals, children, 
and people with panic attacks are a liability in the post-apocalypse. Correct. Do not and people that snore. And, and, <laughs> and, and people that snore. Do not hang out with them. I, okay, I agree with you, and I want to. And actually, I want to point that out. While I was watching the movie, I remember I, I've been to your house once, and I remember thinking I couldn't remember if you had a cat or not. Yeah. And I remember thinking I think JC has a cat, <laughs> and this cat, and based on all the cat sitting I've done and all the cat mm-hmm. interactions I've had, I don't think having a cat is the best scenario for the end of the world. One Let and the cat two. Go. Yeah. No. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, and I, that's and I know there's probably going to be some cat, I, and I probably have a large cat owning <laughs> audience. I, this is not hate on cats. I'm saying if the no. world is over, at some point you really have to choose your yes. life or the cats. Yes. And it feels like in this one they kept choosing the cats over and over again mm-hmm. in a way that I could not suspend disbelief yes. for. You're absolutely right. There are several times in which I'm like, that cat, you're going to die. Yes. You're going. You should be dead. Yes. There's there's no way in the world like we build the tension to save the cat out of a tree essentially <laughs> yes. and then to tell me oh no we all made it even though we just watched yes. smaller sounds get like uh-huh. mowed down by these monster aliens yes that said i will say that as we've talked about this movie is self-contained and i think and, and small yeah. and in such a way that for for whatever you think of it and for whatever anyone thinks of it i will say that for me it didn't overstay its welcome 90 minutes, a 90 tight minutes. 90. It I think it was 99, if I'm not yes, mistaken. It is. It is a tight movie. And I, like, I don't remember how long the first one is, um, but I really felt like when I was watching this one, there was a point in the story where I was like, oh, okay, I'm done. Like, this is enough. And just as I thought that, they wrapped it up. They were like, all right, we're, 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 we're landing the plane now. We're bringing it home. So none, of these movies, it. none of these movies have overstayed their welcome. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I will say, let me, let me, let me be the villain. Let me be the reality TV villain there. I will say that the first one, it didn't overstay its welcome, to be sure, but it was long. It was. You were wrong. It was no. It you was, have never been wronger. It was. It was. This is the wrongest you've ever been. <laughs> it, oh, oh, I can get wronger. No, it, it was sprawling, but like, like it was, it was good. Don't get me wrong. I loved the first one, but like now seeing the second one, I think about. I just think that there were nips and tucks that could be had in the first one that I would have been okay with. Like, it, it, I have no idea how they would have nipped or tucked that they movie. Could, they could nip it. They could nip it. I just think try. you. I well, think that you. There's no. I'm almost convinced that it's the same runtime. I'm, I'm tempted be, to look it, it up. Be, be, Keep do, talking. Do it. Do it. So <laughs> no. It's okay. So do look it up. But what, what I'm saying is that like I remember for the first one, I remember there was a whole lot of just like, you know, very well earned. Uh, kind of anxiety and angst and like what do these monsters look like oh god i see a face what is what is the runtime of the, the first, first movie is shorter than it's this shorter. movie it is an hour and 30 minutes it's a it's a tight, a tight 90 i have never been wronger <laughs> <laughs> Mark it down. <laughs> Yo, what is Mark it down. <laughs> June 26th. 9.02 p.m. I have never been wronger. No, but okay, so that's fair. It, it Maybe it didn't overstay its welcome, but the, to me, I guess there was something about how, and I love this about horror movies and things like this, where they don't tell you, like that's one of the things that's very frightening about these things, right? And you, you don't know what the monster looks like. You know that you have to hide from it, and you don't know exactly what it looks like as an audience member, and that is terrifying, and it puts you on the edge of your seat. But there's something about this one that there was none of that. There was none of that like, oh, what does it look like? They're, like you're running from a thing that you can't quite see. There was a little bit of that in the beginning. And then they started showing you. And it's like this Demogorgon-esque because that's what all monsters are now. Like someone saw Stranger Things and put it everywhere. But like there are these demogorgon That's really true, J- yes, JC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, those monsters are now everywhere. The same kind of thing. And like, and and I, and I it's just like, just show me. Just show me what the thing is. We'll run from it. I'm going to be just as scared because you're going to do the sound design amazing like you did. So I will say that at the very least for me, this one didn't stay overstay its welcome. And I'm glad to know that the others didn't either. I will say this. I, I think this movie was very good at tension. Mm-hmm. Uh, too many jump scares, almost to a point where I, I, I almost thought I might have to leave. I have blood pressure issues. So watching this, I'm like, this is really stressing mm-hmm. me out. Uh, but the tension was ratcheted up. But it, it, that is also something that's similar of all these movies yeah. where there is a lot of tension in all of them. They, it felt like they ratcheted it up a bit. It, this was a, definitely a thriller. I wouldn't call it a horror quite. And I think what you were talking about, about not showing the monster, they did a very good job of playing in the background. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. a lot with yes. all of these monsters, like seeing something, playing with sounds, pulling them in from the background in a way that even though I knew what the monsters look like, monster aliens look like, <laughs> I, I still felt like there was some uh, there was some sense of them holding back for yes. me what it actually was. Yes. With all of that being said, you know, we rate mm-hmm. out of five stars here at mm-hmm. leaving the theater, three being I would see it again, four being amazing, five being perfect, two being I hated it, one being I will burn it and Hollywood to the ground. (laughs) Where do you rate this movie out of five stars, J.C. Howard? I will give it a 3.9. I thought this movie was very, very good. Maybe not amazing, but it was as I, I think I've made no secret at this point. I enjoyed this movie, and I, 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 I mean, I, I will see it again. I will. I'm, I'm sure I will see it again, um, especially because of the runtime. And like, I'm kind of surprised that I haven't seen the first one again because of the runtime. But like, this is a movie that I'm definitely going to watch again. And it's, it's not a masterpiece. It's not amazing. But I, th- I do think that the acting is really good. I think the sound design is really good. I think it's short. It's sweet. It's to the point. If you haven't seen two, this for me is a 3.9. I am likely convinced that that we will hear about this film again during Oscar season for sound design, uh, for sound design specifically, uh, for sound, whatever. It should be in the running. They should make sure that they launch it in that direction in order to make it an Oscar-nominated film. I think there's also probably an argument there for some of Lupita Nyong'o's acting, but she's more than likely doing something else later this year that will probably be (laughs) bigger than that. Uh, With all of that being said, This is a movie, this is still further evidence, as J.C. Howard says, that the movies are back. This is something you should go in for air conditioning. And with that, I give it a solid three stars, three of five stars. I would watch it again. Uh, I'm not excited to watch it again because I think what gets me about, especially about a summer movie, is there's got to be a part in the movie that I'm, like, looking forward to as Mm -hmm. it comes up. And for this one, there's nothing like that. There was nothing in this movie where I'm like, man, I got to see that again. Mm -hmm. Not like the first one. The first one, even just when you walk up to their house and see that there's like different rigging of the lights knowing that at some point that is going to come into play or what happens with all of the uh what happens with all of the uh, hearing aid equipment and the ocular implants i'm sorry the cochlear implants implants uh all of that is all stuff that i think is worth uh, uh looking forward to especially in the, even in the second one there's a whole you know parts with a boat and an island that are exciting for me this one the parts that were like very high tension all the parts that they showed in the preview there wasn't anything like fun to hold on to I felt like in this and I felt like they did a very good job of setting this movie up as bigger than it actually intended to be mm. with the wide shots of New York talking about how loud it was all of that yeah. parts of that where I'm just like ooh, this is going in a different direction from the mm. first two and it didn't quite do that again you could go to the theater and see a lot of very good movies right now and this I would say is a fine movie. It is three <laughs> of five stars. Uh, according to JC, it is a very good movie, yes. which, and I think a lot of you will watch it and be like, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, but again, without, I, my other question would be without Lupita, is it as good? Oh. And I think the answer is this is on Netflix. This is in Redbox yeah. oh, if Lupita's not in this movie. No, no. Without Lupita, there is no movie. I mean, she is, she's, I think, fantastic in this movie. I think you're right. She probably will have something else coming up, so it won't, it won't, like, launch her to the, you know, to the nominations and things like that. But she's amazing in it. I think she's, and especially, I don't know, I, like, I'm, I'm very much a sucker for the, the Quiet Place, I Am Legend type of thing where you have to, like, where the acting, the faces, all those kinds of things, that has to carry you through. I'm very much for that, so... Lupita is this movie. Speaking of I Am Legend, there's rumored to be an I Am Legend 2 with Michael B. Jordan. I'm very excited about this. Uh, and they're also basing it on the uh, DVD ending and not the not the movie ending, which is why Will Smith is still alive. For those yeah. of you that haven't seen it, I'll only bring that up to say with the success of Black uh, of uh, Bad Boys, I think now people are realizing that this might be more bankable and they could make some money for it. So with that in mind, I will definitely agree with you and say yes. That whole <laughs> Last of Us vibe, that type of yeah. thing, or I Am Legend, yeah. all of that, I'm one 100% here for that. And with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. I mixed this episode. And today I was walking around looking for a good spot to record because there was too much wind, knowing that if there was wind in this episode, it was not going to sound as good as it could if I'm the one mixing it. You know what would help? 
your contributions. That's right. If you go to patreon.com slash leaving the theater, you can help me hire mixers to make sure they're doing a good job mixing the show. Here's the thing. Even if I continue mixing, you should still become a Patreon member because I put the show out every week. I've missed a couple of episodes the last couple of weeks. I'm still grieving. We didn't even talk about the grief angle of this movie, yes. which... It's like a whole nother kettle of fish to boil, which I won't even get into. Yes. All of that being said, this is a labor of love for you. And if you appreciate it, please donate to patreon.com slash leave the theater or go to the link in our show notes. Show art from Heather Wilder. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about A Quiet Place Day One or J.C. Howard, check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or threads at oh, it's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh, it's Big Ron Studios shows by following us on Instagram at oh, it's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at oh, it's Big Ron Stu. That's S-T-E-W. Have it tweeted on there in like two years. Leaving the theater. We'll be back soon. Thanks for listening, and thanks for being on the show. Shh. You know you don't messed up my audio doing that <laughs> loud shush. How dare I wanted to make sure that you. it got picked up. I don't know why. How it was dare right you? In front of my face. You are an audio to, producer. Know, you just, just bring it down. Just How bring it down.